Welcome back, it's uh, Mr. Rootsart again, and we're going to take a look at uh, ionic compounds again, uh, do a little bit more practice with them. This time we're going to look at moving from the name of the compound to the formula. Last time we went from formula to name, this time we're going to go name to formula. It does get a little bit more difficult this time because there's a little bit more attention to detail that we have to make uh, when we look at the actual charges of the ion. Uh, when we write them in the uh, formula itself. When you go from the formula to the name, uh, the formula is already accurate in its charges, in its balancing of the, um, of the ions, and in its balancing of the, um, the charges being positive and negative. But now when we move from name to formula, it's a little bit different. Uh, so just pay attention to detail. Again, it's just a, a number of, um, you just have to practice it a lot. And uh, so I'm going to go through and work through a few examples here with you. All right, so our first example is uh, sodium iodide. So this is going to be a little bit uh, more difficult because we're not just looking for the symbol, we're actually looking for the name, but you'll become familiar with where they are. The first thing we're going to do is locate the cation. In this case, it's sodium. Sodium's over here. Then we go and look over and find iodide. It's right over here. So sodium is Na positive 1, and iodide is I negative 1. So again, like I showed you in the example before, we're going to cross these over. But any time that we have a 1, we're not going to write that. So our next step, this is a two-step, unlike the other one. We didn't have to do a number of steps. Uh, here we're just going to write down NaI, and make sure that you write them down according to that we only put capital letters where we're supposed to put capital letters and we only put lowercase letters where we're supposed to put uh, lowercase letters. So NAI, we're not going to write any subscripts in this one uh, because if we were to write a one, that would be wrong. All right, let's move on to our next example. Strontium fluoride, strontium fluoride. So again, I'm going to look over on the left-hand side of the periodic table. I'm going to find strontiums over here. And we're going to find fluoride is right here. Okay, strontium fluoride. And I end up with SR positive 2, SR positive 2, and F negative 1. Now, when I cross these over, like I'd mentioned before, I'm going to let's rewrite those. And I'm going to write this as SR. And I'm not going to write the 1 down here. We never write a 1. We just leave the 1 out. And I'm going to write F2. Okay? So SR, F2, that's strontium fluoride. Okay? And make sure that our balance is char that our charge is balanced. So 2 positive, and then we have 2 negative. Perfect. Okay. Let's move on to our next one. Lithium sulfide. Okay, we're going to go and find lithium. Lithium's up here. Okay, lithium and sulfide. It's right here. Okay, and we write down Li positive 1. And sulfide is S positive, negative 2. Let's cross over our symbols or cross over our numbers. So that's what's going to give us our subscript. So Li. 2s. We don't write the 1. We never write the 1. Okay, so it's a two-step approach here when we do these. Let's do our, our last one. Our last one is radium chloride. Radium chloride. Where are we going to find radium, radium, radium? Radium is right here. Okay, radium chloride. R A two positive chloride is C L negative one. Okay, let's cross over those digits again. R A C L two. Okay, so as I said earlier, it's definitely um, I always think that it's easier to go from the formula to the name. Uh, but going from the name to the formula is still fairly simple. It's just a matter of paying attention to, and it's, it's a two-step approach. So write it down with the charges first, 
let's cross those digits over again we have to go to the lowest common multiple uh, you don't see it that often but we need to go to the lowest common multiple we'll probably do some of those when we get to the multivalence and um, and when we do some of the polyatomics but again it's just a matter of practice do a number of these you'll become familiar it's mostly just speed and being able to find out uh, and being familiar with where the ions are all located on the periodic table so practice again rewind this video take a look at it if you're unsure about what's going on and uh, we'll see you in class